everybody. Welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in Michigan in a zone 5B. Today we're going to do a mid-June garden tour and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the plants in the video that are doing well and what some of my plans are as I do maintenance in the garden in June so you can get some ideas of some of the tasks that you might want to work on in your garden. We talked about doing a hosta video and there was a lot of interest in that, but also in learning a little bit more about the hookahs as well as the pulmonarias. So I think what we'll do is kind of uh, look at the woodland garden and some of the shade plants in another video and just really focus in on that particular area. So I can try to compile some of the lists of the different plants that I have and uh, work on sharing that with you next. So, all right, let's get started on this garden tour. I think you're gonna find it lovely. There's been lots of changes, even though it's only been just one week. Let's go. Last week when we did the garden tour, I neglected to show this area to you just to show you how it's growing on. And you can see that the ajuga is definitely past its prime in this area. And a lot of the salvia I have cut back. So I cut back the crystal blue salvia and the azure snow salvia. But we do have this hydrangea that is a paniculata hydrangea that is getting ready to set buds and then you can see these two incredible hydrangeas have lots of buds all over them and um, what's happening right now that i was hoping would happen is the geranium that i planted back behind them is getting so large it's creeping between them so i think that's going to look really pretty once the hydrangeas come into bloom with the white and the blue and the green foliage now we'll see also this time of year, some of my opening act flocks, the early bloomers begin to uh, bloom and they are just starting to bud out here. You can see some of the opening act blush here in front and we have some opening act pink over here that are getting ready to open up. They're just tightly coiled. But I did wanna get this tour in today because tomorrow we are going to have 90 six degree heat i believe so it's really good this time of year if you see the heat index creeping up to get your garden really well watered before that sets in so i have definitely taken care of that uh, these last couple of days you'll see here the dark pink we have some dianthus that's blooming and the liriope on either side of the walkway and then this pathway is just covered in creeping thyme and it is blooming right now and it blooms quite a bit all throughout the summer so it's very pretty. Now also in this bed we have some blue marvel salvia and that's this purple and uh, it's kind of like the sister plant to the rose marvel that we'll show you and then of course the foxglove is blooming over here. Let's take a look at the fountain bed area next. So here we have the fountain area and you can see there's a lot of things that are blooming right now and it's really gorgeous. Um, we'll start on the left over here with some of the amazing white buds on this mock orange. This is the first year that it has bloomed for me. It's the third year that it has been in the ground and it is just magnificent. It smells great and it's a nice contrast to the deep purple of the multi-blue clematis that's behind it. And I love the way that it looks in combination as well with the cat's meow nepeta. That is like a lavender bloom. And then the spirea is finally starting to bloom. And this is the superstar spirea. And I just love the color of the blooms on this one. You can see the rose behind it. This is called All the Rage, and it is beginning to bud up and preparing to set some blossoms. And so over here on the other side of the walkway, we have some that have already started to bloom. And I just think that kind of coral pink color is so beautiful. And then also in this bed, of course, we have some foxglove and the mugo pine right here and the hostas that are underneath of this fountain these are all august moon hostas and then of course we have some more dianthus up in front with the pink and the dusky violet penstemon which is blooming now isn't that beautiful i love the color on that 
And these two urns are starting to flush out a bit with the growth on the verbena and the snapdragons are setting buds. So I think we're going to get some really good color on those this week. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't show you these Christophei alliums, which are blooming right now. They've been going strong for about a week and a half. They just started uh, last week. And uh, we have some Schubertii in the front yard that I will show you as well that are looking really nice. And this topiary form right here is just an arborvita that I decided to um, turn into a topiary form so that I could see the fountain better from the deck. All right, let's take a look at the long bed. So we'll start in the dark corner over here that is brightened up by this cheery spearmint hookera and the beautiful autumn frost hosta. And this clematis is just about done with its first set of blooms, but it still continues to show some amazing color and shape and form. Now you can deadhead clematis if you wish. I enjoy seeing their seed heads. And we have some more salvia here. And some white di dianthus. And I think this one's the water slide hasta. And we have a paniculata hydrangea here. This is a strawberry sundae that is setting some blooms, or some buds, I mean. And then over here, surrounded by some of the wavy wee hostas, is another superstar spirea. And this quick fire is really ready to bloom. I mean, those buds are strong. The hanging baskets are growing on really well. I think those are turning out nicely. I can't wait to see them fill out even more. And again, I did give them a really good water before this heat is coming on here. And this is the Rose Marvel Salvia, the sister plant to that Blue Marvel that I showed you earlier. Down all along this bed, you'll see some very bright pink, fuchsia-like color dianthus. We'll also be seeing quite a bit of the blue spruce sedum. This is a plant, I bought one plant and I scattered cuttings throughout the front of this border and it's getting ready to bloom a bright yellow. This pristine blue penstemon is done blooming and I think I would like to collect some seed on it. So I'm gonna cut one of, or all of them back except for one of the stalks just to collect some seed on it in case it doesn't rebloom. These alliums are looking rather cute. <laughs> um, they look like these little pointing upward arrows because they have been pollinated so well and they are going to form seed heads. This is the Mediterranean Bells allium. And we have some foxglove blooming at the back of the border here as well. And then just like, let's just take a look down this border so you can see what the color looks like as we go. I always like to get, you know, kind of a long view of the garden and step away from it and see how things work together. But here you can see really strongly in this area how those blue spruce sedum are getting ready to bloom and put on some bright yellow. It's just a very strong pop of color. And then my tiny diamond lilies also have some great blooms happening. And the hookah spires are very beautiful. I like to leave them on. Some of them don't have as beautiful blooms as others, but um, many of them have nice blooms and the pollinators love them, even though they're super tiny. So I like to leave them on and just enjoy them. And then once they're spent, I'll come through and cut them off.
This particular hookera back here, this one is called Delta Dawn and it mimics the colors that are in this barberry next to it, this lemoncello barberry. And then that's just offset by the really strong lime and purple of this Color Spires Violet Riot, which is also a salvia. The Duchess of Edinburgh is at the end of its flowering cycle. But you can see now over here, we're starting to get a lot of dianthus along the front of the border and the color from the ultra pink phlox. And then we have some white phlox and I can't remember the name of this one off the top of my head. This is one of the proven winners types. It's uh, opening act. Ooh, I, I'm not even gonna guess because I will guess wrong. But the blooms on this uh, ultra pink are very big. Now behind that we have the Eden climbing rose which has tons of buds all over it. And it doesn't climb a whole lot because I'm just not sure if it's hardy enough in my area to be a true climbing rose. And then in this bed we have some more tiny diamond lilies that are getting ready to bloom and so those will be a really nice continuation of the same color down here throughout the bed and I believe this is a quick fire hydrangea back here that is setting buds and I'm waiting on this clematis to bloom still it might be the diamond ball clematis but I can't recall I got a whole bunch of different clematis at the end of the season last year at one of the nurseries that was having a sale And the barberry is looking good. Um, it's, it's still growing a little bit more upright and I'm going to love to have that arching habit grow back over time throughout this season. So that will happen. And then we have some contrasting foliage over here with the bilberry hookahs. And as you can see, um, even after cutting all of those chives back, they're growing on really strong and beginning to fill back in. Oh, it looks like we're getting some buds on this penstemon here. This is the Midnight Masquerade. That's exciting. And some more blooms from the perennial geranium. You can see I go through a lot of plant material in my garden and I get questions a lot about whether I have help in the garden or if I do it myself. So I do it myself in my spare time. My husband does a great job of keeping up with the lawn and the pool and then I take care of the rest of the garden and um, you know I spend about maybe 15 minutes to a half an hour each day just walking through the garden and I carry my secateurs with me to take care of anything that might need some tiny pruning and I leave little piles in different places to come back and pick them up later. Um, we also both work full time so this is just kind of uh, we enjoy creating a nice space to live in. So lots of colors going on in this bed and uh, definitely throughout this season I'm going to be watching this bed and I'm going to be thinking about what um, and how I want to edit it because I do like the soft color in the front here that we have with the hookahs and um, I think those are the marmalade kind. I'm going to have to, again, I'm going to look up what all of my different varieties are uh, so that we can do a proper tour of this woodland garden but I'd like to eventually divide some of those perhaps and put those along the front edge of the border just to kind of have that little bit of a softer color. There's my two clearance columbines waiting for me to plant them on. Now this week um, it's a good time to make sure that you have pruned your boxwoods 
I have come through and pruned a lot of plants. This barberry has been trimmed up and I think it looks really nice. It's, it's when you trim barberry, it goes back to whatever color it is uh, that hasn't been touched by the sun. So this is starting to deepen back up to its dark maroon color. And then you can see I have a boxwood in the middle here and I have quite a few boxwoods um, throughout the beds back here. The violet flower you see here is that violet dusk penstemon and then the pink flower is the royal catchfly. Also this time of year you'll start to see some flower stalks starting to shoot up from some of your hostas. Um, so I'm interested to hear from all of you. Do you cut back the flowers on your hostas or do you leave them? I'm getting some apples on my apple tree. These are two Liberty apples. Very excited about that. So some of my hostas, I always clip the flowers off because they aren't really a whole lot to see or to smell, but there's a couple of hostas that really have nice scent to them. So for example, these hostas right here, I'm always clipping the flowers off. They're not a super pretty color and they don't have a nice scent. So I have dug out a hosta just to make room for this mega caramel hookera because I am eventually going to try to divide this hookera. Obviously not when it's 96 degrees out, but I'd like to continue to put that around the bottom of this plum tree. And so in place of it, I think that's called the honey super tunia by Proven Winners. So I just put that there. It's an annual and um, it's kind of a placeholder so that there's plenty of room for this hookera to begin to spread itself out. I like to try to give you guys different views of the garden, different perspectives. Oh, I did put this window frame in the back here. I'm not sure whether I like it or not. It might be a little bit too much, so I might take that out but it's just sitting there for now. So you can see these, these boxwoods have been trimmed up on either side of this pathway. And I even gave the boxwood over here a little trim, even though it's still very small. My music box rose over here is very beautiful and I'm loving watching it change colors. It starts out um, this very light yellow with pink edges on it, and then as it ages, you can see it turns into this pink color. Isn't that pretty? And I had two roses in this garden bed that I thought I had lost, the grandma blessing, Grandma's Blessing rose, um, but they're coming back, so I'm pretty excited about that. I wanted to leave them in the ground just in case. I usually do that until the end of June if something doesn't look quite right because sometimes the roots are still strong enough to come back. So there's one of them. I was hoping the astilbes would be blooming by today, but they're taking their sweet time at coming out. You can begin to see the pink spires. This will be, this one's called Visions and it is a pink astilbe. Then we have an Annabelle hydrangea in back of all of these hostas. And this lungwort, the leaves are getting really, really big on this lungwort. It's quite beautiful. More small hookera blooms. And then you can see kind of the difference between, so this is an old school hookera. Um, I'm not sure even what it's called off the top of my head, but it's right next to a spearmint hookera. And this spearmint hookera, which is made by Proven Winner Winners, has these beautiful um, blooms on it, whereas the older variety has really tall spires or spindles, but the flowers have no color to them and you can barely even see the color. So that's kind of just a testament to how breeders over time continue to 
look for different traits in plants that we find very desirable and when we find them then we can pick those out. The Hoconi Chloe grass is really filled out now that it's gotten warm. I just love the way it's draping over the edges here. Just look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And um, after I come through here, I'm just going to spin around a little slowly. Try not to make you dizzy so you can see the giant size of this blue hosta. I think this one is humpback whale. so excited at how well these rhododendrons are doing in my garden. I love the addition that they are and I'm also really excited to see how well the Brunnera is doing. I had bought one plant at the end of fall last year and split it into about four different plants. So it'll be fun to see if I can get some more plants as well this fall. The Half Moon Garden over here is doing really nicely and um, we'll come around to the front of it. This Half Moon Garden is where I actually planted the new cone flowers that I got in the clearance video that we just did. And we have the beautiful New Dimension Pink Salvia along with this gorgeous buttery yellow rose which is called High Voltage. And I love the fact that we finally have some different colored foliage in this bed with the addition of these evening rose hibiscus. It really adds some nice contrast and color to the bed when you're able to provide different types of foliage, large leaves and small leaves, dark leaves and light. And here we have another high voltage rose. Here's one of the cone flowers that is starting to open up that bright orange. I was thinking that color would really look good with these nasturtium that are in the pots. And they are really beginning to bloom quite profusely. They are simply gorgeous. But I definitely think I could get away with planting a few, few less next year. Over here we have more geraniums and salvia, more dianthus, and then the beautiful little violas and the burgundy glow ajuga along the edge of the path. These containers are doing really well. The clearance plants that are in them look great. If you didn't know they were clearance, you would never guess. And I've been snacking on peas here in my potager garden, and I have been giving lettuce away by the bag full because it's probably going to bolt since all of the heat is coming and then it will be no good. I will have to begin sowing some new seeds. Isn't this rose beautiful? Again, this rose was just in my garden when I moved here. I love the way it looks when there's petals on the ground. So I don't know what variety it is, but I des definitely enjoy it. Okay, over here, before we get too far, we do have some great hydrangeas over here that are the smooth arborescence version of hydrangeas. Um, the two large shrub ones are called Bar Harbor Seaside Serenade and uh, they are very much like an Annabelle or Incredible Hydrangea. So those should be blooming soon. And we have some more purple, deep purple salvia in this bed along with dianthus. And that brings us to the area where we have some pinkadot flocks 
And then closest to the shed door here is the blush. Opening act blush. So pretty. And this this version blooms and reblooms pretty much throughout the summer. So it's a really long bloom time. And um, over the past couple of years, I've really tried to focus on eliminating plants that, unless I really like them, if they only bloom for a week, that I'm going to get rid of them. And my wish list for plant breeders right now is a long blooming peony that is mildew resistant. So if we could get some people <laughs> to create that, I will plant quite a few. This garden is still looking really nice over here. Just lots of magnificent blooms. I have come in through and cut back and deadheaded my peonies because they are all done. The sedum over here is looking really good. This is the marina sedum and I do not cut this back because it doesn't flop too bad in the fall. It has a tendency to stay fairly compact. Okay guys, this video is getting rather long, I know. So we'll have to go through the, the front yard uh, fairly quickly. But this bed is looking really nice, super healthy. Along this border here, I have just been cutting back some of the suckers of the lilacs that have been popping up because I had lilacs that went up to uh, the roof and I decided they were just unmanageable and were only blooming for about a week and just not worth the amount of effort to put in to keep them under control. And so I've gotten rid of them. The Virginia throughout my yard is doing really well this year. I think with all of the rain and just the great weather, their roots are quite healthy. So they're putting out really big leaves, just like the hostas. This plant pops up now and again in my garden, this dark leaf little um, button flower uh, type plant. This is a euphorbia. I have no idea what kind. It just kind of seeds itself around. And then this is a blue shadow father gilla. And you can see it just continues to put on more and more of that waxy coating that makes it that beautiful blue color. All of the hostas in this bed are getting really close to each other. I probably will have to do some dividing of these in the fall, but for now, I think they look gorgeous. Over here, the Paint the Town Magenta are continuing to bloom and the bedazzled hostas are really starting to spread out. And then we have these rose, I think these are called rose orange flax. I'm looking forward to seeing these bloom this year. I got those on clearance at the end of the year uh, because they had finished blooming. So I haven't seen them bloom yet in my garden and uh, it will be fun to see what they look like. Okay, let's take a look at the front sunbed. This one I've been working on any plants that you have with suckers, speaking of like the suckers on the lilac, I have some suckers that come up almost every year on this weeping cherry. And so just get in there and prune them and make sure you keep them pruned because they will take some of the energy away from the main tree um, if you don't. So yeah, just kind of pruning it up and it looks really nice and natural with the uneven bottom growth. And if something gets too long, I just trim it up a little bit but make sure that I don't trim it completely evenly so that it still looks natural. I'm just noticing that the bobo hydrangeas over here have set buds and I've also noticed that these daisies which are called the goldfinch daisy have set buds as well. So we have some things coming along. I have cut back all of my alliums, my purple sensation alliums, 
and then I have tons of mums throughout this bed and so I cut those back as well so that they will be nice and bushy and full with lots of blooms this fall. Now what's happening in this bed and what's changing over here? Well we have some drumstick alliums that are going to replace the uh, purple sensation alliums. These are much smaller, a little more diminutive, but they have a really cute Dr. Seuss-like properties to them as well. So those will be fun. I'll show you those when they bloom. All the colors of the salvias are still just blending together very beautifully in this garden. I will say that this Veronica, which um, I called Veronique last week, it is the Venice Blue Veronica. So this one's um, starting to go over and so I will cut that back and see if we can get a rebloom re from it this year. Then I do have some penstemon also growing in this bed. And the alliums here are starting to go over, but let's take a look at the front of this bed. Because it's also got some fireworks going on. And it's pretty much the only fireworks you can get in the form of a flower, but these are the Schubertii alliums I was telling you about earlier. And I don't know if you can get a sense of just how big those are, but they're about two hands across. Absolutely gorgeous. Do any of you grow these and do they multiply themselves? I wonder. So we have a couple of bobo hydrangeas in the front here on either side of these purple salvias. Uh, just in front of the barberries, so that's going to be beautiful when they bloom. And then we have some dreamland geraniums, which are this light white color right here. I was very excited today to see that the black lace elderberry is starting to bloom. Let's see if you guys can see that. Just starting. I'm not sure how long these beautiful pink lacy blooms will last because with the heat they might not last as long as I would like, but they sure are pretty. I do need to trim out the boxwoods in the front yard. I haven't gotten to any of those yet. I'm loving how much the black scallop ajuga is beginning to spread for me in this garden bed. And we do have some millennial alliums that are coming up. Millennial, I always call them millennial alliums, millennium alliums. And then this hydrangea here is a paniculata hydrangea from a cutting and it's beginning to bloom. And not to be outdone by the front side, but the neighbor's side looks pretty good too with these beautiful Oscar Peterson roses. So the peonies yet to bloom. I haven't clipped that that bloom stock off yet. Just letting it be. And this Louisa crab apple is filling out really nicely and it has berries all over it, or crab apples I should say. And here we have some more of the same rows that I showed you in the backyard, but it looks slightly different out here in terms of the size and shape of it. This one is the um, high voltage rose. Very, very beautiful. And my rhubarb back there is getting super big. I did look online and I can get some purple wave petunia seeds online if I want to this fall, which I might do because I do really like the color of it. But I don't really want to think about this fall just yet. 
And here we have the last section of the garden. These liatris are going to bloom. They are coming and it's going to be a sight. And this PG hydrangea right here is going to bloom. It's putting all of its buds out. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed this video today. I can't wait to hear from you about how things are growing in your garden and whether you like to cut back on your hookahs or your hasta blooms or if you just let them go. Thanks again for joining me today and we'll see you next time.